Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about one of the most important diagnostic and therapeutic modalities in the field of respiratory or pulmonary medicine. The name of the procedure is bronchoscopy. So bronchoscopy basically when if you go into the history it was introduced by Gullivan. The person who introduced rigid bronchoscopy is Sir Robert Gullivan. He was the person who first used a rigid bronchoscopy to extract foreign bodies from airways. As the age advanced and as the technology improved, there has come into existence the flexible bronchoscopy. It was introduced by Japanese scientist. So the main use of flexible bronchoscopy is you can directly visualize the airways of a person in toto. So you can directly go into the lungs and you can see whatever there is in the airways. CT scan is a non-invasive procedure where you can only overlay and look. You cannot definitely say that it is present. Whereas the flexible bronchoscope, it has a camera attached into its tip. So we will be going into the lungs through nose or through mouth. So once we enter into the lungs, we will go into the trachea that is called windpipe and bronchi and we can go up to the segmental, subsegmental bronchus basing on latest bronchoscopic uh, instruments. So you can visualize whatever it is there. We can remove whatever obstruction is there, we can collect fluids and everything. First one is indications. The indications of bronchoscopy are primarily any lung infection that is commonly termed as pneumonia. So pneumonia is nothing but an infection of the lung. So whenever there is a pneumonia which is not being improved with proper medication even after 3 to 5 days of treatment or whenever a suspected malignancy is there or whenever there is a suspicion of any foreign body in the airways, you can go through, go and see into the airways through the bronchoscope. The second one is hemoptysis or blood in the sputum. Whenever a person coughs blood in the sputum, it is definitely not normal. So when, uh, when it is there, it is a mandatory test to be done along with CT scan. If there is anything massive blood is there, so the procedure will be converted into a rigid bronchoscopy procedure which will be discussed later. The third important thing is ILD, interstitial lung diseases, where the person will be lungs or uh, hold or multiple scarring will be there where to diagnose or to see any secondary bacterial infection is there, bronchoscopy will be done. The next one is irritant or continuous cough irresponsive to any drugs with a normal CT scan. Whenever a patient comes to us with a complaining of cough, even though with all the probable medication given, even if then if the patient does not show any improvement and also the CT scan even though it is normal, it is mandatory to do a bronchoscopy and get the resultant uh, fluids and do the testing. Usually bronchoscopy is a outpatient department procedure that means it can be done in a OPD basis. So it is usually done under local anesthesia. A 2% lignogen spray will be given through the mouth into the pharynx and then the procedure is done. In case if we suspect that patient is not fit for a local anesthesia or if we suspect something major then the procedure will be done under general anesthesia in an operation theater complex. So once the person is local and anesthetized of his throat and nose, usually it will the scope will be passed through the nose, nostril, either one of the two nostrils and then will be going to the lungs. Before going to lungs, it has the advantage of visualizing of the vocal cords also. If there is any vocal cord pathology, bronchoscope can easily diagnose basing on the movement of the vocal cords while doing the procedure. So the procedure usually takes around 10 to 20 minutes. If any intervention or any procedure needs to be done, it can prolong up to 1 hour to 2 hours also. The most important sample that will be collected through a bronchoscope is bronchoalveolar lavage. It is nothing but once we go into the airways, depending on the previous x-rays and CT scans, we will be knowing which part of the lung is diseased. So this bronchoscopic instrument 
will be guided through that segment and then a flash of normal saline will be introduced into the particular segment and then we will be suctioning back the fluid. The physiology behind this is that whenever we are pushing a fluid into the particular segment, the fluid will go and collect water, debris, whatever cells are there. Once we are sucking, this fluid will take that amount of debris or the cells, whatever it is there, that will be sucked along with that fluid and it will be collected in a separate collector. So, one is bronchiolar lavis. This bronchiolar lavis can be subjected to various tests that may include gram strain, AOB strain, gene expert, cultures and everything, every possible investigation. The second most common is endobronchial biopsy. That means we will be going through the bronchoscopy will be done and through that bronchoscope, through the working channel, a forceps will be introduced into the scope and then any particular lesion in any endobronchial growth or sometimes we have to take normal mucosal biopsies also. In such cases, we will be using the forceps to collect the specimen. This collected endobronchial biopsy will be further used, investigated by histopathological examination or microbiological investigations. The third most common procedure is transbronchial lung biopsy, TBLB. So, this transbronchial lung biopsy can also be used to know whether in cases of ILD or in any infective causes or in suspicion of malignancies. These three are the main uses. Besides this, as I told you earlier, there can also be foreign body extraction. If there is any foreign body is there, usually the procedure will be done under general anesthesia where the person will be intubated and then the bronchoscope will be passed through the tube into the airways and then whatever the foreign body is there, various modalities like dormia basket or forceps or Fogarty balloon, they will be used and the resultant foreign body can be removed. This bronchoscope can also be used to remove the any blood clots or any mucus clots that obstruct the airways. ICU bronchoscopy is a very important step for even in a ventilator patient. The reason being in a patient who is on ventilator, the airway secretions may be thick and can cause obstruction of the airways that leads to poor ventilator effort or delay in extubation or removal of ventilator. So, in such cases, we will be passing the bronchoscope to the endotracheal tube and then we will be removing water obstruction is there. It can also be used to rule out any ventilator associated pneumonia. Besides these indications, other indications are bronchoscopic intubation where we can use the bronchoscope as a boozy or a stent so that the endotracheal tube may be induced in difficult airways. Besides this, there are other indications as uh, therapeutic, these are all diagnostic indications. Therapeutic indications, one is foreign body aspiration, the second one is uh, debulking or removal of an endobronchial tumor and dilatation, any airway which is got stenosed, it can be dilated, dilated to normal patency, stent placements and closure of the bronchopleural fistulas.